You've met the debit and credit twins. Now, let's put them to use. After you've got a good analysis of a business transaction and what is impacted in the accounting equation, we can record that transaction using debits and credits. Let's use the transactions from the novel mug that we analyzed previously, but this time we're going to record them using debits and credits. We received $50,000 investment from shareholders. When we analyzed these before, we looked at what part of the accounting equation was impacted and whether it increased or decreased. So this was an asset increasing and an equity increasing. Specifically here, we got cash. So that's the account that we want to record. Cash is an asset. If cash or an asset is increasing, how do we do that with the debit credit rules? Well, we need to debit it to increase an asset. The other part of this was an equity was increasing. So this was an additional owner investment. And since we have shareholders, that means our owner account would be the stock account. So we're going to record stock account. And equity is increasing. To increase an equity account, I need to credit it. Now my debits and credits are equal. We rented a building for $2,000 a month and are now paying the rent on that. Before we said that there was an equity involved and also an asset involved. Well, the equity involved is an expense account. We're paying rent on this building, so that's a cost of operating our business. So I'm going to use an account called rent expense. And if an expense account is increasing, we increase expenses with a debit. Also, we paid for the rent, so that means that an asset is going down. Specifically, cash is decreasing. How do we decrease assets? We credit them. Now all my debits and credits are equal. I'm done with this journal entry. We purchased coffee equipment for a total of $11,000. This equipment is something we own. This is an asset and it's increasing. So let's write down an equipment account or even coffee equipment if we wanted to be that specific. How do we increase an asset? We debit it. So we're going to put an $11,000 debit here. How did we purchase it? We paid for it. So this is cash. Cash is an asset and it is decreasing. How do we decrease an asset? We credit it. Next, we purchased coffee beans for $2,500 and supplies for $850. So we said here we had assets increasing and we paid cash for these, so we also had another asset decreasing. That's okay, as long as it's not the exact same account. Also, we have two different assets that are increasing. We've got the coffee beans and then we also have supplies. Coffee beans are part of what we hope to sell, so this would actually be inventory. So we're going to record inventory increasing. Assets are increased by a debit. So we're going to debit inventory for $2,500. We also purchased supplies. So we can include them in this same journal entry. Supplies is a type of asset. It's different than inventory. You're not hoping to sell the supplies. You're just using them in the course of business. And this was for $850. Supplies are also an asset and we're increasing them, therefore we're going to debit them. Now the total of all of these items is $3,350. We could have done one entry for each of these or we can combine it all into one journal entry. This is called a compound entry when there's more than two accounts involved. When there are only two accounts involved, it's called a simple entry. Both of these items were paid for with cash, so we can include both of these in the same compound entry. So I'm going to write cash here. This is an asset, but it's decreasing. So we want to credit or decrease the asset for that total of $3,350. Now if we add up all the debits, they equal $3,350, and if we add up all the credits, they equal $3,350. We've recorded everything that happened in the transaction and the debits equal the credits. We've finished the journal entry.
We also purchased books for $5,000. We're a coffee shop and bookstore, so we also hope to sell books. So previously, we said an asset had increased, and again, also an asset had decreased. What asset increased? Well, it's inventory again. Books we are hoping to sell as part of our business. We've increased this inventory count, which is an asset, and we increase assets with a debit. So we're doing debit inventory for $5,000. How did we get the inventory? We gave cash. So an asset also decreased. Cash is going to be recorded, and we decrease an asset with a credit. So we're going to credit cash for $5,000. Also notice whenever we have a journal entry recorded, all of my debits are listed first and all of the credits are listed next with a slight indentation. The last transaction we had was to purchase some nice cozy comfy chairs and bookshelves for $18,000. So what did we get out of this deal? We got some chairs and bookshelves. So that sounds like an asset, right? And they're increasing. I would use a particular account called Furniture and Fixtures. For time, not time, <laughs> space sake, I'm just gonna put F and F here. Otherwise, I'll probably run out of room. So Furniture and Fixtures, that's a type of asset. That's increasing, so we're going to debit it for $18,000. And we paid cash for this. So again, another asset is also involved, but it's decreasing. So we're going to record cash, and as it's decreasing and is an asset, we're going to credit it for $18,000. And one asset went up, one asset went down, the debits equal the credits, all is right with the world and the accounting equation is happy. Using debits and credits is how we record all business transactions in accounting. Getting used to it? The more you practice, the easier it gets.